Yo, what's going on, guys? Tanmaya for Simple Snippets back with another video tutorial on C++ programming, especially the object-oriented programming. So, in this video tutorial, we'll be talking about a very important concept in C++ programming, especially the object-oriented part, that is virtual functions and abstract classes. So, this is a very conceptual topic, and I have seen many students get confused in this topic. So, I'm going to try and make this as easy as possible to understand. And we've already discussed what is function overriding. So, if you have missed that video, you might want to check it out because there are some concepts required of function overriding in this video. Tutorial. Tutorial. So if you don't know what it is, you can see on the top right corner, I've shared a link. You can check it out. Also, if you don't know what pointers are, you might want to check out one more video tutorial, which we've covered in this playlist itself. So I'll again drop the link and you can see a card on the top right corner. And if you are new on this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of video tutorials like these on this channel and you'll get a lot of informational content on simple snippets. So now that you've subscribed, let's move on to the tutorial. Okay, so before we get into the programming part, we'll first actually see what exactly a virtual function is in terms of theory. So I've made some points over here, you can see on the screen. So what I'll do is I'll just read it out and then we'll see a program so that it gets more clear practically as well. So a virtual function is a member function which is declared within the base class and is redefined by derived class. Okay, so reading the first line and if you have seen the function overriding video tutorial, you'll be like, okay, then what is the difference between a normal function being overridden and a virtual function? Because function overriding can happen without virtual functions as well. So that point is correct. Now let's read the second point. So when you refer to a derived class object using a pointer or reference to the base class. So what it, we are doing is we are creating a pointer of base class and we are pointing to the derived class. At that time, you can call a virtual function for that object and execute the derived class version of the function. So this sounds a little different because in this case, we are using the pointer of the base class to call the function of the derived class. So what does this help us in? So virtual functions ensure that the correct function is called for an object regardless of the type of reference used for the function call. So using the same base class pointer, we can call different derived class functions using that same base class, provided that the base class is the same for the multiple derived classes. Now I know that theoretically this sounds a little vague and this idea will be more clear when we actually go ahead and see the program. So let's first cover the theory. So now again, this is mainly used to achieve runtime polymorphism and we've already discussed what is runtime polymorphism and compile time polymorphism. Now functions are declared with a virtual keyword in the base class. So the function that you want to make virtual, you have to add a keyword of virtual beforehand. So you'll see that in the program and the resolving of the function call is done at runtime. So this was a little bit of theory about virtual functions. Now let's move on and let's see what a pure virtual function and abstract class is. So let me just read out the first point. So sometimes implementation of all functions cannot be provided in a base class because you don't know the implementation. Now such class is called abstract class. Okay, so let me give you an example. Let's say you, you are creating a class which is known as shape and then you are deriving multiple shapes out of it. So the base class is going to be shape and say for example derived class could be circle rectangle. Now if you want to have a function of calculate area. So in the base class that is in the shape class, you don't know what to actually implement because we don't know what exact shape it is. So the implementation we don't know. So in that case that function can be a pure virtual function. So a pure virtual function in C++ is a virtual function for which we don't have any implementation and we only declare it. Of course, you'll see the syntax in the program. So a pure virtual function is declared by assigning zero in the declaration. Now some important facts about pure virtual function are as follows. So a class is abstract if it has at least one pure virtual function. So if you are ever asked that what is an abstract class? So an abstract class is, the, is a class which has at least one pure virtual function. So you don't need to add any extra keyword saying this is a class abstract and all. The class which has one pure virtual function by default becomes an abstract class. So we can have pointers and references of abstract classes, but an abstract class cannot be instantiated. That means we cannot create an object of an abstract class. The reason being that because we do not have any definition for the function. Now, if we do not override the pure virtual function in derived class, the derived class also becomes an abstract class. So this was pretty straightforward. So these, these were the some points which I wanted to discuss in terms of theory about what a virtual function is, what a pure virtual function is and what an abstract class is. But the only way you can understand exactly what is happening and what functionality does it give, give us, we'll have to see a program for that. So let's move on to the programming part now. Okay, so quickly open up your DC++ ID and start typing the code along with me and I would recommend that you type the code along with me so that you understand in a better way and that's how programming is mastered at a faster, faster speed. So, okay, so let's start off with creating a class. So in this first program, I'll show you the difference between a normal function and a virtual function. So how is it different from each other and you'll see the functionality. So let's just first create a class. I'll say class my base inside that in the public section, I'll first create a normal function. I'll say void show 
and inside that I'm just going to print a message so I'm going to say base class show function called just type in handle to take the cursor on the next line so this is a normal function now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more function saying void print but in this case I'm going to make this function as a virtual function. So in order to make a function virtual, as I told you, you just have to add a keyword named virtual before the return type. So I started off with virtual void print. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this message and print it over here. I'll say base class print function called. Okay. So this is enough for base class. Let's keep it simple. I'm going to create one class my derived and I'm going to perform inheritance. Now we've already discussed how to perform inheritance and theory of inheritance. You can see a card on the top right corner, which will point you to a video wherein we've extensively just discussed about inheritance. So I'll publicly inherit my base. And now I'm again going to copy all this code and just paste it over here, but I'm going to change the text inside what is going to be printed in this. I'll just say derived class show, show function called and here I don't need to make it virtual again. Once I've declared it in the base class, that the void print is a virtual function, it will automatically be virtual in the derived class as well. So again, just need to change the text that is going to be printed over here. Okay. So I've created two functions in the base class. One is virtual and one is a normal function in the derived class. I'm overriding both these functions so that I print another message. Now in the main class, let's first create a pointer of base class. So in order to create pointer, you just need to follow this syntax. So I'll say my base that is the class name you can see my base over here star ptr or i'll say base ptr that is once you use a star it knows that it is a pointer the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create an object of derived class so i'll say my derived derived obj now what i'm going to do is in the base pointer base ptr i'm going to pass the address of our derived object that we just created. So what I'm trying to do is I'm using the pointer to point to this derived object now and using base PTR, I'm calling print. That is the print function and using base PTR, I'm going to call the show function. Okay. So let's try to save this. I'll say virtual example one. Now I'm going to try and compile and run. Let's see if this first compiles successfully and let's see if it runs. Okay. So as you can see, we have zero errors and zero warnings. So I just compiled it. Now let me just try to compile and run it. Okay. So there you go. You got the two outputs. The first one was derived class print function called and the second one was base class show function called. So this means when the base class pointer is pointing to the derived class object, the derived class print function was called, but base class show function was called. So why did this difference happen? I mean, if it is a base class pointer, it should have called both the functions from the base class, right? But since the base class pointer was pointing to the derived class object and there is one virtual function that is print. So instead of calling the print from the base class, since the base class pointer is pointing to the derived class, the print from the derived class was called, but this is just because it is declared as a virtual function. So if I just erase this out, save this and execute and run this again, compile and run this again, you can see both the time base class base class functions are called. So just because it was declared virtual, just because this was virtual, this print class was dynamically at runtime called because this is a type of runtime polymorphism. So this function linking happens dynamically. Now, if I have one more class, say for example, my derived two, and if I am publicly inheriting from the base class, and again, this virtual function would be called if I point to that object. So using the same base class pointer, I can point to multiple derived class. So that's one advantage. Now this is, this was just a program wherein I could show you the difference, what exactly is happening, but you must be wondering, okay, where can be this actually applied? So now let's take a real world scenario. Let's try to see where it can be actually applied. So I hope this program was clear to you. Now let's move on to another program. So just create a new source file. Okay. So this I have just created a new source file and I've already typed out the basic necessities of the C++ program. So now what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to show you a real world scenario where you can actually use virtual functions and where virtual functions can come into picture and they can actually help us in programming. Okay. So I'm just going to create two classes first and I'll tell you what they are. All right. So as you can see on the screen, I have created two classes. The first one is class animal. So this is sort of like the base class. 
and inside that I have a function that is public which is void eat inside that we are just printing a message that is I am eating generic food so since this is an animal class we don't know what animal it is it is printing a message I am eating generic food the next thing is we are having a class named cat which is publicly inheriting from animal and inside that we are overriding the eat function and we are saying I am eating a rat so a cat eats a rat okay now let's say outside the class definition and you have a standalone function named void func or anything you can name I'll say function 1 now this function is taking an object pointer of type animal okay and then that pointer xyz is used to call the eat function of that respective animal okay so this animal is base class over here for more clarity let's just create one more class like cat so i'll just copy and paste this over here i'll say dog and then i'll type it i'm eating dog food and here i'll just type i'm eating cat food so we can distinguish between the two functions okay so we have one base class then we have one derived class and then we have one more derived class okay and one standalone function which is not inside any class but it is accepting a pointer object of type animal and it is printing out the eat function of that respective animal now that animal can be anything right it can be a generic animal object it can be a cat pointer it can be a dog pointer anything pointing to any of these three objects okay so now in the main function what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an animal pointer so i'm saying animal star ptr I'm going to create a cat object so I'll say cat cat obj and I'm going to create a dog object as well so I'll say dog dog obj now what I'm going to do is I'm going to point this pointer to cat object first so I'll say ptr is equal to and cat obj so our animal pointer is pointing to the cat object right now and then I'm going to call this function one that we have created over here so I'll say function 1 and inside that I'm going to pass ptr okay because it accepts a pointer variable of animal type so even though this pointer is pointing to cat object it is basically an animal object pointer and it can point to its derived class right so I'm passing that now let's see what message it is being printed so let's just first save this I'll save virtual example 2 let's try to save this let's go to execute and compile and run okay so as you can see it printed I am eating generic food which means that it printed the eat function from the base class you can see I am eating generic food is inside the base class now this problem arised because this eat function was not declared as virtual so if I make it virtual save this compile and run and now you can see it is printing I am eating cat food so now you know there is a difference and this difference we already saw in the example one so how would this benefit us so if virtual concept was not there then what we would have to do is we would have to individually create this standalone function three times so function one would be for just animal function two would be for cat and function three would be for dog and to print their respective eat function or any other function inside them but since we have this concept of virtual methods or virtual function using this simply one function one I can print eat message or eat method or eat function of any of these classes so let's let's try to change this and now if I use the pointer to point to dog object and again call function one and pass the pointer now so I'll just save this I'll say execute compile and run so you can see I'm eating cat food and then you can see one more message is printed I'm eating dog food no. so this means that after this call after this line the pointer was now pointing to the dog object so the method of this that is the function of the dog class was called so this is where you can see using one function I'm referring to each of the functions inside different derived classes so this is one ad advantage and this is one flexibility that virtual functions provide us and this all happens dynamically at runtime so that's why we achieve dynamic polymorphism okay so these were the two different examples I wanted to talk about in terms of programming part for virtual functions and I hope now the concept of virtual functions and abstract class is more clear to you so we discussed the theory as well as we saw where it can be actually implemented so now you must be having a clear idea and now if you can go back to the theory part and read out the points they would be more clear to you because you know where exactly they are implemented and how advantageous it can be when we are performing runtime polymorphism using virtual functions so yeah that's it for this video guys I hope this video was clear to 
to you and this is a very important concept and it is very much asked during interviews in and also in exams so if you have any comments or queries you can always put them in the comment section if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and make sure you subscribe to this channel peace